안녕하십니까 주연철 원장입니다. Greetings, I'm Dr. j u y e n c h e r Today I want to talk about the classification of implant and specifically fixed restorations. Awesome implant can be divided into one body and two body type implant. MS implant is representative of one body and TSKS SSUS are representative of two body implants. The most frequently used implants are TS and KS, which is internal type bone level implant, and I want to focus on fixed prosthesis focusing on TS and KS implant. Depending on the way implant and prosthesis are connected, it can be divided into three, screw type, cement type, and ER type. Screw type is where the prosthesis is connected with the implant via the screw, cement type is when abutment is connected and crown is cemented thereafter. As for ER type, a hole is formed on the crown and cement is used for adhesion. In terms of cementation, it's the same as a cement type, but you can unscrew and tighten the screw via the hole like the screw type. Let's take a closer look at the different types. Screw type is where the abutment and crown becomes one through casting. When we do try in of prosthesis and make adjustments, you need to make sure that abutment and crown move as one. And as screw is adjusted, you do try in and make further adjustments. After a series of process, final delivery is done and the recommended torque is used to tighten and screw hole is sealed. On the other hand, as for cement type, abutment is connected to the implant and then try-in of the crown is performed. In a similar way as you do prosthodontic treatment on natural teeth, crown is tried in and finally after adjustment, cement is applied and it is bonded. In this case, there is residual cement and removing residual cement is the most important aspect here. ER type is similar to cement type in the sense that crown is cemented. However, there is a screw hole as shown here. Using the screw hole, screw can be tightened or untightened. Removing residual cement is very important here as well. After applying cement, the screw is loosened. At times, the crown is fully removed and the residual cement is removed thereafter, and this is a major plus. After that, it is adapted and hole is sealed. Let's look at pro and cons of different options. The advantage of screw type is as shown. Using the hole, screw can be untightened and prosthesis can be removed. Retrievability can be ensured. For instance, if you need to repair porcelain or if there is screw loosening, if there is contact loss or if there is need for repair, you can actually do it. Because cement is not used, there is no gap and that means that there will be no inflammation. Also, cement is not used and this is made into one, so when the, the vertical space is limited, this can be utilized. For instance, let me give you an example of TS system, screw type prosthesis. Let's look at the minimum distance of where this can be used. If there is 4.5 millimeters, from the implant to the antagonist, if there's 4.5 millimeters, you can fabricate and utilize this prosthesis. Please reference it. The downside of screw type prosthesis is as shown. The screw hole should not face the aesthetic zone. Also, because abutment and crown are made as one, a screw needs to be adjusted as try-in is performed, so upon delivery it can be very cumbersome. Also, to provide 
Final prosthesis implant level impression needs to be done. Also, because casting is involved, there can be different error. Because there's no cement compared with cement type, it's difficult to get the passive fit. Passive fit may be more difficult to gain if multiple implants are placed. In the case of TS or KS implant, the connection area of the implant abutment is long, so when multiple implants are placed as shown, it's difficult to get passive fit, and at times this is unachievable. In a multiple implant case, if you are to use screw type prosthesis in order to get passive fit as shown on the image, you need to use a abutment that goes in the middle. If you use convertible abutment from Austin, just like using external type prosthesis, you can fabricate the screw type prosthesis. In the case of transfer abutment, which is TS type 2 piece abutment, if the angle exceeds 22 degrees, then it's impossible to fabricate as screw type. In that case, you can use a three-piece or four-piece abutment to come up with screw-type prosthesis. Convertible abutment, multi-unit abutment, or if the angle is severely tilted, you can use multi-angled abutment to provide screw-type prosthesis. If you are to use these kind of abutments, you can make all on four system prosthesis, which is receiving lime light these days, very easily with passive fit. Awesome also provides Magic 4 system. You can selectively place four to six implants in areas with good bone quality. GBR can become minimum. If you use divided T bar, Placement angle can be compensated for. Zirconia prosthesis can be utilized, and using T-bar screw, you can fabricate screw-type prosthesis. If you use Magic 4, implants can be placed where bone conditions are more favorable, and you can tie prosthesis with different angles in one piece and provide the screw-type prosthesis, and also at the same time gain retrievability of implant. On the other hand, as for cement type, there is no screw hole, so you can use it in aesthetic zones. Also, cement is used, so it's easy to get passive fit. In a similar way as you do with natural teeth, we can fabricate and set the prosthesis. Therefore, it's quite convenient. On the other hand, it's difficult to remove the crown without damaging the prosthesis. Because cement is used in prosthodontic aspect, there can be downside of the cementation. In periodontal aspect, if there is residual cement, there can be periodontal issues. ER-type prosthesis is combination of advantages of screw-type and cement-type prosthesis. The advantage of screw-type prosthesis is that porcelain repair, contact loosening, and screw loosening can be resolved very easily. On the other hand, it is easy to get passive fit and prosthodontic treatment can proceed in a similar way as you do with natural teeth, just like cement-type. So it's quite convenient. The downside of ER type is that because it has a screw hole, it cannot be used in aesthetic zones. Also, because it uses cement, there can be potential periodontal issues because of residual cement. If you look at Dr. Lincoln Vicious's literature in 2012, in cement type prosthesis, in 85% of the time, peri-implantitis disease were observed. In the case of cement type, when the patient has history of periodontitis, 
In 100% of the time, periimplantitis were observed. On the other hand, if the patient had no history of periodontitis, the patients exhibited periimplantitis 9% of the time and periimplant mucositis about 60% of the time. On the other hand, in the case of screw-type prosthesis, periimplantitis was observed in only 1% of the time. According to this literature, in the case of cement type prosthesis because of cement, periimplantitis can result. Efforts to reduce excess cement is important. We can think of eight different ways to do that. First is supragingival margin, use of minimal amount of cement, practice abutment technique, using vent to remove cement, lubricant or dental floss, local anesthesia and cement removal, gingival cord or rubber dam, unscrewing through screw hole. These methods can be utilized to remove excess cement. Let's take a closer look at a couple of them. First, we can think of supragingival margin. Supragingival margin can be utilized in four different scenarios. Narrow ridge, thin mucosa, insufficient attached gingiva, and when there is a periodontal recession. In these cases, supragingival margin can be considered. According to literature, if the margin of implanted prosthesis becomes steep, the amount of excess cement increases. If applicable, it is more favorable to make supragingival margin. Minimizing the amount of cement can also be a good option using 50 micron die spacer as a standard the ideal amount of cement would be about three percent of inner surface volume when applying cement inside the crown rather than just filling it in think of it as applying a thin layer of cement next we can utilize practice abutment technique the crown was cement is placed on the abutment analog and excess cement is removed first. After that, crown is set on the abutment in the oral cavity. This is a good method, but you need to use a stock abutment and abutment analog. This is a downside. If you are to use an option that is not stock abutment, in other words, if you're using custom abutment, you can use the following option. You can put in Teflon tape on the inner surface of crown, and then on the die, you do try in of the crown. If you take it out, within the crown, there's Teflon tape. This Teflon tape serves as a 50 micron die spacer. You use bite material and you add bite material on the inner surface of crown. Once this sets, abutment replica is formed with a 30 micron space, which is the thickness of Teflon tape. Uh, using this replica, you can utilize practice abutment technique in the same way. If you look at literature, practice abutment can be effective, but forming a vent hole so that excess cement can come out can be quite effective as well. Among the three different prosthesis types, in the case of ER type prosthesis, the hole serves as a door or a pathway to loosen the screw, but uh, this also serves as a pathway for the cement to get out. In that case, it is meaningful to use ER type prosthesis. Adding Vaseline on the margin or using floss can be meaningful. When you apply Vaseline, we need to make sure that it does not go over this point. When you use floss, during the bonding process, we need to make sure that the floss does not get in between abutment and crown. 
You can also use gingival cord and rubber dam. According to recent study, rather than using rubber dam, retraction cord and practice abutments show better result. When you make prosthesis in ER type, the screw hole screw can be loosened and after that, abutment and prosthesis can be removed. After that, cement can be removed as well. After cement removal, you can position the prosthesis again and repeatedly tighten the screw. After prosthesis removal, when positioning it intraorally, if there is difference in implant placement angle, non-hex abutment is more favorable than hex abutment. Personally, at my dental clinic, I primarily use ER type prosthesis. In the case of posterior area, Screw hole can be made towards the occlusal table, but in the case of interior area, we cannot make screw hole lingually. If possible, I try to make screw hole in invisible area where aesthetics are not as important. In order to do that, placing implant in the plan position is very important. I use Austin's one guy system to place implants. After placing implant in the planned position, if possible, I tend to utilize ER type prosthesis. As shown in lower right, at times direction may not be ideal and making screw hole may not be possible and you need to adapt accordingly with different given situations. In order to make a good ER type prosthesis, I've mentioned that it is important to avoid applying excessive cement. I've talked about different ways, but I primarily use these four options. If possible, I make supragingival prosthesis and I try to make minimum amount of cement. Like ER type prosthesis, I use a vent hole so that excess cement can come out and at times I utilize practice abutment technique. In order for these to be possible, it is very important for the implant to be placed in ideal position. Let me summarize. In the case of screw type prosthesis, the biggest advantage is that it has great retrievability, but it's difficult to get passive fit. On the other hand, as for cement type prosthesis, there's no screw hole. It's aesthetic, and because cement is used, it's easy to get passive fit. However, cement can cause various problems, so we need to pay attention. I primarily use ER type prosthesis, and in this case, just like screw type, it is easy to retrieve, and passive fit can be achieved, which is the advantage of cement retained prosthesis. However, there can be issues related to cement, so we need to pay attention so that there is no excess cement. Thank you for your attention. I like to close today's lecture. If you're interested in more specifics, please refer to offline master course. Thank you.